hi guys you're welcome back my name is Bukumi BK Crown thank you for clicking and today we are going to be checking out this video together titled my love for science led me to Islam so let's check it out I was born into a family that was not too religious my grandmother was Buddhist so that was what we practiced at home burning joss sticks joss papers praying in front of the altar etc at the same time, my parents enrolled me into a convent where I was exposed to Catholicism. We said prayers and sang hymns every day and I really enjoyed it. At that age, I never fully understood the concept of religion and the difference between the different creeds. I did not realize that individuals were expected to pick a religion. In fact, I thought that God was one and the same, and whether burning joss sticks or singing hymns, it was just the different means we had to reach the same God we all shared. The young me thought that everyone shared the same God, but we just communicated with him in our own ways. Yeah. During my teenage years, I developed my intellectual domain tremendously. I developed a strong interest in science. Science was the most amazing thing to me. It explained many of the things that I never knew about so perfectly. Every time I learned something new, it was like something clicked. A piece of puzzle would fit and I could visualize how everything came together. Oddly though, there was a particular part of my learning where this process failed me and did not give me the same satisfaction. And that was when we learned about the creation of the universe and the origin of life. No matter how I tried to understand and internalize the Big Bang Theory, it was not intuitive to me. It did not feel right. Likewise, when we were taught that all species on Earth originate from a single cell, it did not sit right with me. There was no click, no fitting of the puzzle, no images and visions in my head. All that laid flat on the paper. This time, I was not filled with satisfaction, but doubt. That bothered me, and I never knew why. Naturally, my love for science drove me to take a science course in university. Mm. I had previously developed an idolization of Darwin and his work. In that situation, there was no room for religiosity. No one could convince me otherwise, because, come on, it's science. Science was my love. I aspired to be a scientist. I made a hobby out of challenging my religious peers on their beliefs, quoting them grand questions from Richard Dawkins and Christopher Hitchens that were meant to undermine their faith. They would often stumble and stutter, and I would feel triumphant as they would further reinforce my beliefs. During the last year of university, I met my husband. Admittedly, I had little to no interaction with any Muslims in the past two decades of my life. He was the first Muslim I met. I knew absolutely nothing about Islam. Since he thought to introduce Islam to me, I thought, why not ask him the questions I used to ask my religious friends? It stumped them, so it should stump him too. To my surprise, he gave me very assured answers, wow. unlike the friends I had stumped previously. Since I knew nothing about Islam, I thought to give him a chance. Hmm. Okay, so when you're in the mosque, what statue do you pray to? There is no statue. We pray to hmm. God. Then... What do you pray to? God. God. Oh, okay. So who's your God? Who's the Muslim God? What's his name? He's not a Muslim God. He is God. The one and only. Mm. The creator. Allah just means the one and only God. As long as you believe in the creator, there's no your God or my God. It's our God. Mm. So you pray at him upwards? We direct our prayers in a particular direction. Mm. Oh, is it some holy direction? No, it is towards the Kaaba. Mm. Oh, the black stone? You believe it to be magical and that it possesses mythical powers, right? No, it is just a block made of stone. Mm. Huh, then what's so holy about it? It's not. Only a law is divine. It simply focuses every Muslim's prayer in the same direction. Mm. This particular conversation shattered so many preconceived notions I had of religions. Mm. Admittedly, I never bothered to deep dive into any when I was younger, but the aspects I thought were illogical were so eloquently addressed in Islam. Mm. 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 I wanted to find out more. He told me about the Prophet, who was unlettered, and the Quran, which has not been altered in the past 1400 years. I was intrigued. This was such a refreshing perspective to religion. Everything that I thought were clear signs that religions were man-made were not manifested in Islam. I remember thinking to myself, if someone made this up, 
That person must have been a genius. It was different, refreshing, intuitive. I felt the click. It made sense. All praise be to God. He opened my heart that day as I began on my journey in Islam. Wow. What a very inspiring story. Beautiful and very inspiring. Like, hmm. Nice, nice, nice. I love how the old journey started for her. You know, I also had this mindset when I was young that we all serve the same God, be it Christian, Muslim. And when I mean young, way, way young, like when I was in primary school, you no, know, getting to primary school. Yeah. So I had this mindset that, oh, we are all serving the same God. We all have one God, be it Christian, Islam, wherever you are from. And that's my man mindset. And that's what she also said. So she said she was a Buddhist. So along the line, you know, she loves science. I thought she's going to tell me that, okay, she found this in the science book that connected to Quran. That was what I was actually imagining in my head when I saw the title. I was like, you know, there are some scientific facts in Quran. I've reacted to some scientific facts. I thought maybe she wanted to tell us that, okay, she just came across the Quran one day through somebody and, and you know, to her greatest surprise, she noticed that science and Quran are similar. That's what I was actually imagining in my head. But the story, you know, turned in a different way and I was moved by it. She said, why, you know, studying science, she met this man and this man is a Muslim and she started having a relationship with a man and she, you know, something came to her, like she, she felt the need to ask the man that, okay, what do you guys pray to? You get it? Because you know, she has never been to a mosque, but maybe she, she has an idea or she has heard some things, you know, some misconception about Islam that she wanted, you to, she wanted to clear her doubt from. And the man explained everything to her that they don't pray to any, you know, image. They pray to God. And the Kaaba is a way of you directing your prayer to all Muslims are directed their prayer to God and you know the meaning of Allah is the one and only God we are all serving the same God I love the answers the husband gave to her like you could know that the man knows a whole lot about Islam and he is proud of his religion and he knows his religion so well and those answers actually made that draw closer to Islam. And that was a beautiful way. You know, I, I think in along the line, she said she has you know, discussed with one or two people and she didn't get the answers she wanted. But through her husband, she was able to get most of the answers she needed because she had a lot of doubts in her mind concerning Islam. And from there, she started, you know, reading the Quran and that's how our journey started. I really enjoyed the story. It's so inspiring. Like woo, beautiful, beautiful. Kudos to our husband for you know for leading her to the path, for letting her understand more about Islam. Kudos to him. Thank you so much for watching guys. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button for more like share and comment. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.